Hey y'all, it's Steffi and welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I'm going to be sharing what I do for a living, which is internal audit. Specifically, I am an internal audit manager for a global company and I manage the internal controls over financial reporting for our European entities. It's going to be different than the one I did back in 2015. In 2015, I was working in public accounting for a mid-tier accounting firm. Today's video is all about internal audit. If you are excited about this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to be a part of our subby fam because we would love to have you. Y'all, I have a feeling this is gonna be a long video. Grab a snack, grab a drink, sit back, relax, and let's chat about internal audit. A little bit of background about me. I have been working in the accounting and audit profession for nine years. So I started my career at the big four. I was part of the external audit group there and was there until I was a senior. I then was in industry for about a year. I did regulatory reporting for half of that. And then the other half was an internal audit for a publicly traded company. So I was working specifically on the SOX side of the department. I have a whole video about what SOX internal controls and more specifics about that in a separate video, which I linked in the cards and in the description box for y'all. Watch this video and then maybe go to those ones to get a little bit more into the details about those topics, about internal controls in general. After that, I went into a mid-tier accounting firm, which I have a whole video about why I went back into public accounting after being in industry. So I'll link that in the description box as well. And also a bunch of videos that I've done about being in public accounting for mid-tier and big four accounting firms. All of that will be in the description box for you guys. I was at the mid-tier firm from senior to manager. At the mid-tier firm, I was also doing external audit again. Similar work like at the big four, except for a mid-tier firm. Luckily, was able to find this job that I have had for the past two and a half or so years. And I am an internal audit manager for a private company, so not publicly traded on the stock market. So we are not SOX compliant. And I'll go into more detail about nuances about that. Prior to getting this current job, I had about six and a half years of experience. That's my professional life in a nutshell. For internal audit, if you're a publicly traded company, typically you'll have internal audit, but it's split up into a couple, two or three different groups depending on the company. One of them is specifically focused on Sarbanes-Oxley, like internal controls over financial reporting. That also includes information technology general controls, so ITGCs, and those are very specific to accounting and financial statement related controls and risk controls over account reconciliation, basically data going into the accounting system, like controls over journal entries, so one person prepares it and creates it with all the information and then another person is making sure that it all makes sense, is calculated appropriately and it follows the accounting standards. So that's a control as well as the IT portion which is like who has access to these key financial systems, how is access reviewed, are people who are terminated, do they get their access removed timely, is the access that is provided to people, is it like appropriate? You know, you wanna make sure that one person can't go in and submit a journal entry and then approve their own journal entry or you don't want someone who is approving disbursements also reconciling that same account because you know then there are risks that someone could move money into their own bank account change management which is controls over making changes to your finance or to your system so let's say like a payroll system adding in a bonus calculation type thing in the system, making sure that management tested it in more of like a pre-production environment and you know that went through a review and approval and then at that point once it's approved then it goes into the production system. Firewall configurations um, and a lot more of that stuff and also um, cybersecurity is becoming a big topic as well, obviously it's a very big topic in our environment now, so that's something else that they look into. External auditors also look at. I do wanna to touch on the IT auditor side. I get a lot of questions about IT auditors. Don't need to have an accounting degree or background to be an IT auditor. Usually people will have some kind of computer science degree. There's also licenses that you can get 
For that, there's the um, Certified Information Systems Auditor License, which is a CISA. Um, it's one that I'm looking into eventually getting as well, as well as my CIA. I don't have my CIA, which is a Certified Internal Auditor, um, but I am a CPA. So, things of that nature, so if you're a publicly traded company, that's more the SOX side of the department. And then on the other side, there is more operational risk focus. They're not necessarily subject to like your external auditor. So what I used to do. So when you go through an external audit, which every publicly traded company is required to have obviously a audit done of their financial statements and of their internal controls over financial reporting. And so that's what external auditors do like public accounting firms like big four firms and mid-tier firms and maybe some regional firms as well that's the external audit side when you're internal you are part of the company um, you are still independent you're an employee of the company the SOC side the work that you're performing is scrutinized by external auditors as well when you go on to the operational risk side it's not necessarily the focus of external auditors operational risk could be like do we have appropriate processes in place to meet our customers SLAs which are service level agreements. Let's say you're a notebook manufacturer and your customers you've agreed that the turnaround time for creating or manufacturing notebooks will be seven days. Are you able to meet that seven day SLA service level agreement? Or if you're not like what can be improved and those types of things, how leads are being being divvied out to salespeople. Like I had mentioned, I worked for a publicly traded company in industry, non public accounting firm type thing. We call it industry. And so I did work for a SOX internal audit group for about, I don't know, six to nine months, something like that. Um, in between my big four and mid-tier accounting firms. And I really focused on the SOX processes. The work that I did there was very similar to what I did when I was in external audit. Meaning, you know, you have a specific control, let's say the journal entry one that I was talking about before, you perform a walkthrough, you're sitting with the preparer and the reviewer, and they kind of um, explain their overall process, how they get the information, how they calculate, the journal entry, how they enter it into the system, what the reviewer does to validate, you know, that the numbers make sense and that they are complete, that they include everything they should include, that it's accurate, you know, there's no miscalculation. So doing that walkthrough and then performing operating effectiveness testing. I go into a lot more detail over in that internal controls video, so please take a look at that so that I'm not gonna repeat that in this video. But the task that I performed as an external auditor for testing controls was very, very similar to what I did when I was doing SOX internal audit for a publicly traded company. On the flip side, when you go to a private company, Obviously, you don't have the requirement to be SOX compliant as a private company, much more of a mixture of both internal controls over financial reporting, very similar to SOX, you know, kind of following that framework, but just not, you know, not necessarily having to do that. And then also a mixture of operational type audits. Now the operational side of audits, I have had more experience about that now, but that was completely different than what I did in my public accounting days. That was completely out of my comfort zone. I've never done anything like that before. And um, it's actually pretty interesting. It's kind of funny because I remember the mentality when I was in public accounting. If you enjoyed internal controls like and doing process walkthroughs and reading process narratives and basically understanding process from start to finish, if you found that interesting, you were like literally a diamond amongst a bunch of rocks, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like people typically have kind of a negative thought about that for some reason or I don't know, maybe it's not interesting to everyone or maybe they don't think it's, I don't know, I have no idea. I thought it was really interesting, um, much more interesting than you know just making sure numbers tied and made sense each their own so the job requirements for internal audit specifically i'm talking on the finance accounting side someone with similar um 
with a similar degree as me. Minimum requirement is typically like a bachelor's degree in accounting to get like an entry level internal audit staff position. Now the more that you move up, which we'll talk about hierarchy, <laughs> your career progression for internal audit is very similar to public accounting except you don't have the very specific timelines because when you go into industry, moving up in the ranks of a company is really dependent on business need and also like obviously your work performance and merit. Um, but the kind of levels are very similar to public accounting. The pay also is very similar. I think that is a little bit higher than public accounting. You're not guaranteed a raise like you kind of are in public accounting, which if you want to hear more about that, check out the videos in the description box. So as an internal audit like staff or analyst, you'd probably be looking around the 50 to 55 thousand dollar range i'm talking about like the dfw dallas fort worth market you don't necessarily have to have like a license of any kind when you first get into this job then you'd move up to a senior seniors again i would probably be looking maybe 65 70 000 to 85 90 000 being kind of the high end of the range as a manager you're probably looking at about 90 000 to 110 115 000 at the high end after that you become a senior manager some some companies you may not have that senior manager um position but i would think from there on you'd be 100 and 15 to 130 or so from there you'd be a director and it just goes up from there you know what i'm saying <laughs> so then it goes staff senior manager maybe senior manager if you have that there director and then vice president of an internal audit group i always recommend people going into public accounting because i feel like you get a lot of really good work experience very quickly much more so than you would maybe in industry i'm not saying that for everything but um generally that's what i've seen so for example you could be a staff in public accounting be there for you know one year two years and then you could get an internal audit senior position in industry pretty good pay bump and go into that senior position you could be a senior in public accounting and then once you get your cpa license and you're done with public accounting you should be looking for you know either a very highly paid senior or a manager position when i left public accounting i did a lateral move so i was a external audit manager and i went into an internal audit manager role while it was lateral it definitely was a very nice pay bump and it aligned with the goals that i have for myself and kind of the job duties that i wanted for myself once you get to the manager level most likely be looking for someone with some kind of license CPA license is generally like great, like you don't need anything more than a CPA license, but if you have a CIA, that's good too. If you don't have your CPA, but you have a CIA, you could still get to the manager level more likely than not, depending on the company and the company's specific needs. The reason a CPA license has more weight than a CIA is because it's included within the CPA exam. There's a section, odd, audit. Learn about internal controls and all that other jazz, but you also have kind of a technical accounting understanding. So it's more of like a, it's a good catch-all kind of license, whereas the CIA is very specific to internal audit. I don't have my CIA license, but it is one of my goals to get, and I'm thinking about maybe pursuing it this year. So I'm looking forward to it. If any of y'all have taken the CIA exam before, please recommend some study materials, I would appreciate that. Hours, deadlines, work-life balance, travel, those kinds of parts of my job. So when it comes to hours, it's gonna depend obviously on the company and the department that you're in. I typically work 45 hours a week. Sometimes it's 40, sometimes it's closer to 45, sometimes it's a little bit more, but I don't work a whole lot like I did back in public accounting. I don't have a particular busy season per se. I do have busier times, so like I said, I work for a private company. We still test you know, internal controls over financial reporting to provide management with some assurances of, you know, this is things are looking good or what to expect before we go into our year-end audit with our auditors. By a company having a strong internal controls environment, segregations of duties, like one person isn't doing absolutely everything, you are reducing or mitigating the risk of, you know, 
errors in your financials, of someone committing fraud, whether that's stealing money from the company or changing numbers to make things look better, like maybe look, make revenue look better. Also why internal controls is very important, even in that kind of an environment. Typically we're a little bit busier in the last half of our fiscal year, doing our like site visits, usually in quarter three, and then quarter four we're doing you know, testing and retesting if there's been any deficiencies and trying to provide management with kind of, you know, here are the things that you guys need to clean up before the year-end audit comes around. It is very deadline driven for that period of time. Um, we still do have deadlines throughout the year with whatever projects we are dealing with, but it's not as intensely deadline driven like I was in public accounting. You know, you have your busy season because you have clients who have to issue financial statements at the end of February, mid-March, maybe mid-April, and then there's quarterly reviews. So you're just constantly like on a deadline in public accounting, whereas in internal audit, um, depending, at least from, from my group, we aren't that way all year round. It's definitely more towards the half, the second half of the year. The first half of the year, we're typically doing more operational focused Audits, which we'll talk more about here in a second. As far as work-life balance goes, it's really gonna depend on the company that you work for. I am like literally so grateful every single freaking day about the job that I have now. Of course, I know there are ebbs and flows in life, but for the past two or so years, I have been very, very happy at my company. The environment that my team and my department has kind of created is one where we're productive, we're efficient for the time that we're at work. And then, you know, obviously we want to have a life outside of that. So we don't want to burn ourselves out because it's not going to do anyone any good. Um, but we are very productive and very output driven. Um, so I think that's very important as well. I do work from home usually once a week and that's very helpful because my commute is pretty long. And then on top of that, when I travel, it's, you know, it's nice to be home. Um, but that isn't to say that because I'm working from home, I'm not getting shit done. Like to work from home, you have to prove that you are still getting just as good work done here as you would in the office. And as soon as people start to see that not happening, I mean, that screws everyone, right? It's very important to have a very strong work ethic, whether you're in the office or whether you're working from home. It didn't start that way, obviously, when I first started with my job. I was in the office every single day, busted my butt, kind of tried to prove that I'm a good worker and that I built the trust with you know, my boss. And then slowly over time, probably like, I, you know, I would work from home whenever I had appointments and, you know, he was very supportive of that. And then probably at the, I don't know, maybe one year mark or maybe a little bit less than that. It was like, okay, well, why don't you guys start working from home once a week, no matter if you have an appointment or not, just because that gives you like two hours of your day back from having to commute. So i um, very grateful for that, but that's not to say that every internal audit group is like that. You bring out the best out of people when like they're happy and engaged in work. My first internal controls job, I didn't work from home. I was in the office every single day. Um, so it was a little bit dif different, but don't screw it up for anyone. You gotta make sure that you're staying productive and that you're getting shit done. Internal audit, I would say that is the best industry job to get to be able to travel to different places. Now, it's going to really depend on your company. My first internal controls job, I didn't travel at all. Um, and if you are a person who doesn't wanna travel, that's an ideal internal audit position. Some internal audit jobs where you're traveling quite a bit, like you're constantly on the road like every other week. If you're looking for a job and they say 25% travel, if you do like 12 months times 25%, that's three months of travel throughout the year basically, dependent on the job. And it'll t typically say what the travel requirement is. There are perks to that because you start to accumulate points for flights and for hotels and for rental cars. And those typically like rewards, you typically get to keep for your own self. So definitely sign up for like different rewards like American Airlines, like an AA Advantage account, or Hilton, Marriott, Avis, Enterprise, like make sure you sign up for those rewards so that you can have like your reward number associated to whenever you guys book travel. I get a lot of questions about, does the company pay for travel? Like if it's a company um, related trip, which obviously it should be unless you're on PTO, 
yes, they do pay for it. So they'll pay for the flight, they'll pay for your hotel, um, transportation like Ubers and taxis to and from the office or to dinner and stuff like that, obviously not excessive. And then they pay for your food. And that's all supposed to be in line with your company's travel policy. So every company is gonna be different. When it comes to like shopping, like you wanna buy clothes, you wanna buy like a new purse or souvenirs and things of that nature, that is from your own personal funds. Like you've seen for me when I'm in Europe, I'm usually there for two weeks, so I have a weekend. So if I'm going to go to a museum or if I go to a sporting event, that's all out of my, my pocket, not my company's pocket. I know that you guys also probably wonder about my husband because he comes with me usually like once a year on one of my trips to Europe, he'll go with me. His expenses, all of that is paid by us, obviously not my company. So, but it's nice because I have a hotel already. Every company is gonna be different. It has to be within their policy, so keep that in mind. I got a question about how did I find a job where I travel so much as I do? And I found my job through a recruiter. So I do have a video, which I will link in the description box about should you leave public accounting, how to find a new job, how to work with recruiters, um, common interview questions, and then also how to give your resignation if you are leaving a company. So I will link that in the description box. So things that are kind of different now versus when I was in external audit, obviously traveling to Europe, <laughs> that is definitely very different than the travel that I did in public accounting. If you're on a special client or whatever, like an international client in public accounting, it's very possible for you to go on maybe one trip per year to wherever destination it is. Um, I had um, colleagues who did that. In general, we didn't have a lot of like, I'm going to Europe, you know, once a quarter or, or anything like that. When I'm doing things related to internal controls over financial reporting, that type of work is very similar to what I used to do in public accounting. But now more on the operational side, not all internal audit groups will do this. And it, they, there may be a separate group that does it. Investigations. So if there's allegations of fraud, like whistleblower, financial related type um, allegations, then my group goes in and does those investigations. So that is very different for me. I had never been a part of that before. So it could be something like, you know, someone is, um, you know, making up fake sales so that they can get commission. It's funny because in external audit, you have those inquiries, do a fraud question with people, and you really are just looking at like yes or no, and then you also look just if there's a yes, then you get like the end result of that fraud investigation. Did it affect the financial statements, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. How did management handle it? So it's pretty interesting being on the you know inside inner workings of that, looking into it, seeing, you know, is it substantiated? Was there actual fraud? From that though, sometimes you can find like process improvements, things that need to get better. And I think that's what I really enjoy being part of a company's internal audit group versus being external. External, we always like, you'd find things and you'd tell them, here's my recommendations, this is what you should do, but you're never part of like the actual fixing of things. And I like being part of the fixing. And then also kind of understanding like, kind of all pieces of the business, the products, how we service our customers, understanding just how everything kind of ties in. Like once you see all of like the back end, and then you see how it ends up flowing onto the financial statements, you get a really good understanding of a company and the business. And that was something I really wanted when I left public accounting. I enjoy going and like talking to different people in different offices, seeing how different offices do things, trying to share best practices, trying to get things standardized for us globally. So here we're going to the question and answer part. Ellen Denise Lucas asked, do you have any direct report? No, I don't have any direct reports, although I do have a manager title. And so that's one of the interesting things about when you go into industry from public accounting, you may, just because you have a manager title or a senior manager title or a director title, that may not mean that you have direct reports necessarily. It's more of a distinguishment of your experience. So no, I don't have any direct reports at the moment. I think eventually that's the plan is for us to grow our group and everything. But I personally was okay with that. Managing people was not like, high on my list of the wish list items when I was looking for a job. I still wanted to help mentor people and whatnot. And I feel like I do that in my role, being like when I'm on site with people and kind of 
sharing best practices and then also through my YouTube I kind of get my mentoring and wanting to help people out kind of out through here so I was okay with not having direct reports I also wanted that because I wanted to go in and get my hands dirty and really like the best way to learn is to get your hands dirty and get um, you know really get into the details of things and one of my pet peeves being in public accounting was like I would be a senior or a manager on a job a new job and it's like the blind leading the blind right like I'm still learning about the company they're learning you know we're all just kind of figuring it out together and I really was hoping to find um, a place where I could learn um, have a really good understanding of things and the best ways by doing it you know what I mean so that when we do have someone who comes in a newer person I can share what I've learned um, instead of being like oh I don't know let me figure it out compensation and my title are reflective of my experience and since I was in public accounting I do have supervisory management experience at this moment in time I'm okay with it Anthony the beer fairy asked what's it like being internal audit versus external audit where are some different tasks etc in internal audit I don't do as much substantive testing like that's not a specific thing that I do anymore however um, sometimes management will want like an independent set of eyes very specific bonus and they want one person prepared it another person reviewed it and they want someone independent to like you know just make sure it all jibes and agrees to compensation agreements and stuff like that that's possible but I don't do substantive audits for the most part anymore and then you do get you know into the details of like a journal entry or a billing report Sandy GPF asked graduating soon and no idea what I want to do how do you decide what you wanted to do so I did not know I wanted to do internal audit when I came out of college I knew I was going into public accounting because I had done an internship if you really don't know what the heck you want to do with your career I really encourage you to go into public accounting because you will get exposed to so many different um, areas of accounting general ledger financial reporting internal audit um, which I will link and put in the description box my video about different jobs in the accounting profession that exposes you to a lot and then you can make your decision from there Jamesha asked do you enjoy all the traveling I do I really do enjoy the traveling I get a little bit of like anxiety before each trip because I am naturally a homebody but once I'm out wherever I need to be I'm totally fine I'm enjoying it you know really making the most out of it I do enjoy it I don't have any human children I have a fur baby but I do want to you know experience different cultures and see the world and see different ways of living and working while I can it can be kind of tiresome especially because my trips are typically a two-week trip um, sometimes it's one week but just being away for so long you know you kind of put your life on hold for a little bit you know you can't get stuff done in your personal life like you would if you were in town so that can be a little bit challenging also because my traveling is to Europe so the jet lag um, the one week trips especially are very difficult because you know you get adjusted and then you come back right away so um, that can be difficult but overall yes I really enjoy the traveling I am so grateful for the experiences that I've had with my company and being able to kind of live like a local in a way whenever I go for work because you know I'm not just doing the touristy things um, although I, I try to do touristy things on the weekends I try to really take advantage of and not in a bad way you know what I mean but like really seize the opportunity of being in a different country seeing how people live and just seeing different things that I wouldn't see without this job so um, I do but it, yes it is tiring and um, at times it can be a little bit lonely but overall it's a great experience and I've really enjoyed it um, this is not related to this but I'll go ahead and answer it lovely star asks go to lip color um, I really don't have a go to lip color all I wear is Burt's Bees pomegranate lip balm that is like my go-to and that's all I wear typically so otherwise I don't have another lip color the accounting man hey bud so he asked how do you feel about being on the other side of the audit during busy season um I feel great <laughs> so mean I'll usually leave work between 6 and 6 30 latest I've left is probably like 7 30 at the latest when I'm leaving for the day and I'm walking by the external auditor room I see them in the they're in the little room that they're in having to be right next to each other staring at the wall I feel for them 
but yo I don't miss that at all I'm just like bye peace out have a good night because a lot of the stuff that we deliver to the external auditors we do in advance of like their super busy time so for the most part it really doesn't affect me all that much or at least because I don't deal with that as much I'm in like meetings with the external auditors or they're reviewing my work and stuff like that it's pretty interesting being on the opposite side having had public accounting experience I understand the way that they think all right y'all so that is going to conclude what I do for a living in internal audit I hope this video was helpful I hope that it just kind of gave you a flavor of what internal audit is really about and maybe you will give it a chance if there's anything I didn't cover in this video please leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to do another video just to clarify thank you all so much for listening I really appreciate y'all enjoy your journey find some beauty in the ordinary and I'll talk to y'all in my next video Hush. Hush up, you. Kind of a little draft of things I want to talk about. Hopefully it'll keep me on topic <laughs> and we'll get through this. Okay, let's do this. All right. <clears throat> Girl, get to the point. And I'm still not getting to the point now. So anyways, okay, we'll move on. It just takes practice, y'all. Like anything in life. For a publicly traded field. No. Sorry, that's my um, washer or dryer. One of them. Okay. Uh, but, um, yeah, so... Minimum requirement look her own, but that's kind of that's kind of uh, you know kind of I wouldn't say trumps, not meaning that in a bad way. Um, uh, um, I don't have my CA look, and yes I do because a little bit. Okay, so um, it's very important to have like a very strong work. It's very important to have a strong work. Ugh, I can't talk um, because you know otherwise. You screw it for, for everyone else and you just gotta be good, you know what I'm saying? I got another question. I know that, um, so, blah, blah, blah. you know, yeah, I'm so mean, I know. I'm like a Cheshire cat right now. <laughs> she was sleeping. Yes, I'm in shorts. All right. Bye. Thank you for watching, friends. And she's so happy that mommy doesn't have busy season anymore, right? Are you happy I don't have busy season no more? Yeah. Oh my heavens. Are you happy I work from home once a day? Once a week? Hmm? Are you happy about that? How about when I go out of town? She doesn't like that. How about when I go out of town? I do like to send her postcards though. Wherever I go, I always make sure to send her a postcard. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Love you. Thank you. Thank you for being so quiet. Toodles.